In today's show, we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to answer the question, will low-code bring the demise of the professional developer? And we're going to do it in a little bit of a different way. So this week, I was on um, Jeff DeVerter's show. So Jeff DeVerter has a weekly show that he does that talks about technology and cloud and all those fun things, right? Jeff's a big fancy VP at uh, Rackspace Hosting. And so he brought me on the show, and we recorded the show as we streamed it live, and I decided to repackage that and put it in for you. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to play his show. I'm going to get credit for making a video, even though this is all I'm doing. No, I get interviewed. And then, of course, you know, his whole, it's his whole show. So if you want to jump to the part where he's interviewing me, it's about two minutes from now. But if you look down in the description, there'll be a link straight to that. If you don't want to hear all of Jeff's stuff, if you do want to hear Jeff's intro, it's good. And then the back half has all of the other news and notes for an industry. So it's a great show. Give it a watch. And let me know, hey, how do you feel about me doing this on the channel, right? So leave comments below on that. And then B, subscribe to Jeff's show if this is the type of stuff that you're more interested in. And C, do you have ideas of other people's shows I should be on that I should then include and package here? I'm all ears. But first, here's our intro. Jeff Diverter. If, if you're watching this on Shane Young's YouTube channel, don't freak out. I know Shane looks a lot better today, but, uh, but, but Shane will be along very shortly. Everyone, I want to welcome you to Cloud Talk Live. And, uh, well, there's supposed to be some real fun stuff that happens right there. Here it comes. Woo! Cloud Talk Live, everyone. Hey, my name is Jeff Diverter. I'm the Chief Technology Evangelist here at Rackspace Technology. And I'm so glad that you're here today. If you're here from Shane's channel, uh, this is going to be amazing. Shane's going to be along very, very shortly. So here on Cloud Talk Live, everyone, we have a, a time to, to get in and uh, uh, you're going to you get to introduce yourselves in the chat below. I want to know who's here, even if you're watching on Shane's channel, because we're going to be able to see that here and be able to respond to you. Shane will be able to respond to you. It's going to be amazing. Uh, and so if you want to get a hold of us also, just send an email over to solve at rackspace.com. I'd love to hear from you, what you think of the program, ideas for improvement, whatever it might be. I'd love for you to, uh, to send us a note. Now, uh, as a reminder at solve, we have all sorts of great resources here at Rackspace. And one of those is the podcast of an amazing episode out right now with Smith Nambiar. Smith is a, a, an incredible low code, uh, incredible uh, cloud native developer working in and around IoT a ton. We have an amazing conversation. Love for you to go check that out. And uh, and with that, actually, I have want to share with you. We do some research here at Rackspace. Every uh, where did it go? Where did it go? It's here somewhere. There it is. Nope, there it was. So uh, we go out every quarter and we interview. Uh, uh, over 1,400 IT decision makers. And in the last batch of research, I asked this question right over there. And it says, do you imagine a time in the next five years where you will no longer own a data center? And look, 56% of those, uh, those IT decision makers, over 1,400 of them in 10 different countries said yes. They do not, they expect a time to not own a data center. I wanna know what you think. Comment down below. Do you think you and your company are going to have a time where you don't own a data center? Crazy stuff. No data centers. Hey, everybody. Now's the time you've been waiting for. If you've been on Shane's channel and you wonder, who's this Jeff guy? Why does Shane look so good today? Well, it's because Shane's about to come on up on the program. So Shane Young is the uh, founder of Power Apps 911. He is uh, a YouTube celebrity. Let's call it what it is. And, uh, and so we're going to have a conversation today around low code, no code development. In fact, we're actually going to, well, not we, I have no part in this. Shane is going to create an application from scratch. So Daniel, let's bring our friend Shane on up to the program. Shane, welcome back to Cloud Talk Live. Hi, Jeffy. How are you? I'm good. All right. It's Pet Names Day here on Cloud Talk Live. Well, I mean, you know, you used the same joke twice in the intro, making fun of how ugly I was. So I felt like I could call you Jeffy. I will probably find another way to say it as well. And it's not necessarily that you're ugly. It's just, you know. It's just back Anyway, there. so we've got some of your friends here. we got friends from Minnesota. You recognize some names. we got folks from India here. We've got Power Ups Automate all the time. I think it's going to be one of your friends. Uh, we got folks from San Antonio. we got people from New Jersey. Shane, this is a global audience you're with today. Well, I mean, it's a question that's on everyone's mind, right? You know, we, we've got all these low code platforms out there, power apps being the best, of course. And now people are like, wait a minute, does this mean traditional devs are going away? And I, and I think it's a fair question to, 
that's on everyone's mind, whether or not it's, you know, ends the way that we all think, I don't know, but uh, it, it's a challenging topic for sure. So it is a challenging topic. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, does the traditional developer, is this the demise of the traditional developer with low code? Man, are you, we're just going to jump straight to the end. I we're, gonna, we're going straight in, Sharon. <laughs> so this the is why I'm no. here. Right. The answer is no. Low code is not meant to replace the traditional dev. But at the same time, I think right, low code is really just about empowering the business owner, the non-developers of the world, the you know, just a person in accounting who's like, hey, I can make myself an app and make my life easier. It's meant to empower them. So it's like, you know, I've heard some professional developers be like, oh, so it's a toy. Got it. Right. Got it. <laughs> It is not a toy though. You know, no. if I put my best little Microsoft hat on, I need like a Microsoft hat if I have one. Somewhere. You should, but, of all the people who should have a Microsoft hat, it's Shane Young. Exactly. Um, you know, the, but the thing is, is like when you look at the low code and no code platform, like it's it's easy to be dismissive of it if you are a pro dev and, and you shouldn't be, right? I think that's one of the disconnects here. It's like, okay, no, it's not here to replace you, but no, don't dismiss it. Because one of the great things about the Power Platform is we have this whole idea of what they call no cliffs development. So maybe Susie in you know the executive office starts the app, right? Builds an app, does some really cool stuff, and then the app grows, and all of a sudden, instead of being a little business solution, it becomes a maybe whole department or branch solution. And mm -hmm. so maybe at that point, she then engages with uh, Mary from IT who then helps her kind of start to put in some more practices, right? Maybe ALM, maybe a little governance, maybe start to expand the capabilities. But then the app is so successful between Susie and Mary that they're like, hey, now we want to do true pro Devi stuff. Like we need this custom functionality and there's the platform. Because the business Debbie. case has proven itself. Yes, right? It's it's grown and grown organically. Then we go engage with Lori and IT or, and say, hey, Lori, I want to do pro dev, right? Like I need this functionality written that is pro dev and they can bolt it in, right? So it's not like you outgrew this low code, no code app. It's not like the pro devs have no place in it, but they need to start working on solving harder problems and making better things cool and not worry about building little business apps that started out with two or three people. Right, because those business apps in the past, what those folks had to do was go knocking on IT's door and say, may we, can we please have an app to do this thing? And while it's a thing that would have great value, it'd be great value in a small context. Even if they said yes, off they go to go through requirements gathering and, and all of the things we know in, in software development. But, you know, that all of that time spent in the low code world is you can even think of it as requirements gathering. What are we, what, what does this thing need to do and refine those requirements, refine what's actually happening. And as that thing creates greater and greater value, then maybe it does get picked up. One of those other areas I think that the developers are still needed for is some of those endpoints that the low code folks need to connect to. Maybe there's a set of data that's a very cautious and controlled set of data that has some um, compliance wrapped up. So there's some real rules about who can do what with that data. So they can create those access points, those APIs for them to get in there. Yeah, and if they do it well, right, then it just seamlessly integrates and it feels like part of the low-code, no-code platform, not only for the user of the app, but for the end maker in, you know, back there that built the app originally, right? They just bolt it in and it's like, oh, look, I have this, you know, one-off custom functionality, but it feels like it was natively built by Microsoft originally. Right. Um, I know Toyota is a great example of that. They, they've mm -hmm. really invested in the power platform. And one of the things that they've done, right, is their pro devs have written – custom connectors, just like you're saying, custom functionality pieces, but written them in a way that they just drop in so that, you know, the line of the, the mechanic out in California wants to use the app, starts with a blank app and just drags that piece in and boom, they've got this really magical Toyota specific functionality without anyone doing, you know, any, any more work, right? Because the devs right. did all the hard work to make it easy. That's right. No, no real calorie burning. Well, think, speaking of how easy it is to create a thing, why don't you create a thing, Shane? We tease the fact that you, in the short amount of time, could actually create an application from scratch and maybe even customize it a little bit. I think we could do that, right? So if we share my lovely little screen here, maybe. There it is. Hello, there screen. There we are. And so, um, you know, if we look, right, the number one place that people like to start is my SharePoint site that is way zoomed in for some reason. Um, but so... <laughs> You know, starting from SharePoint as a data source is just a common place, right? And the reason for that is for most of you, you if you have Office 365, you probably have a license to SharePoint. 
and you probably have a license to Power Apps and Power Automate already, right? It's already covered. So you can build an app on top of SharePoint without any additional licensing. Yay! Yay! So here we can just jump over. I've got this lovely list called my employees list. Oh, I've got to unzoom. I am way Am I an big. employee? You should there list you me as an employee in your demos. You send me a terrible picture of yourself and you um, consent to me making fun of you on videos and you can do that, right? Greg over here is not an employee. Wait a minute, I didn't consent to you today to make fun of me, but yet here we are. I know, see? But yeah, <laughs> Greg here, right? He is one of my uh, just good lifelong friends who gets made fun of. And, and what's really funny is sometimes my YouTube viewers are like, why are you so mean to Greg? And I'm like, because Greg. Because he's Greg. I know Greg. He's a great guy too. Uh, anyway, so I got a nice simple SharePoint list where we've been tracking data for a really long time. We've got cool stuff over here and we want to appify this thing, right? No big deal. We jump over to make.powerapps.com. And the reason I always say go to make.powerapps.com because it's going to direct you to the right place, right? Like for mm -hmm. me, it kind of stays there. But if you're in, like we saw some people from the UK or India, right? So they're in different regions of the world. So they get sent to different Power Apps regional things. Government cloud people get sent to different places. There's there's a lot of versions of Power Apps out there. Um, and you just go to make and it takes you to the right place. Wonderful. And so then now we're just going to say make me an app from data. And we're going to click on the SharePoint here. I'm glad you didn't do the little stopwatch thing like you wanted to. If you had a stopwatch, I wouldn't be ad-libbing. I would just, I'd go faster. <laughs> um, so Power Apps videos is my SharePoint site. But if you're like, I don't know what SharePoint site. No big deal, right? Just come over here, copy the URL. You found it in SharePoint. Paste it up here at the top. We'll say go. Power Apps figures out the site and then shows me all the lists that are available from that site. Somewhere in this hot mess is the employees list right there. And now we say connect down in the bottom right, which is probably under my face, but that's all right. And now bingo, bingo. Jeff doesn't like to tango. Or do you like to tango? I don't know. Probably um, a pretty safe guess. Look a clever that. rhyme and a safe guess. Yeah, see? And then now we've got an app just like that. We can hit play to preview it. And look, there's all my employees. Let's go drill in. You know, you know, uh, you know, Jennifer, right? Yeah, I do. Jennifer. Look at that. It's got all the details about her. It's got her glamour shot photo. We can say <laughs> edit. And you know, Jennifer is a very uh changey person. So used to be her favorite color was pink. Now her favorite color is Teal. I don't even know what teal is. And I'm going to say check. You don't know. That's why you have Nicola. Right. And then if we, I think this is tealish, right? In the SharePoint logo. It is. Tealish. It is. It's kind of cross between blue and greenish. I'm so smart. Um, and so look, it. as as we got over here and made fun of my lack of colors. Um, hey, South see, Africa. Glad you're here, Stephen. Yeah. You can see here that, um, you know, Jennifer's been updated teal. So, that's kind of so cool, this whole right? interface, all of the things, um, Power Apps just figured it out because, and I imagine also because um, SharePoint has its fields so well defined that it can take those definitions and use that to then create interfacey things. Yeah, but basically, so SharePoint is one of the the tabular data sources, right? So SharePoint, mm -hmm. SQL, Dataverse, Salesforce, those are all tabular data sources that present the data as a table back to the app. The app's like, oh, you got a table? Cool. What kind of fields you got? Oh, you got those fields? Cool. All right. Boom. Here it is. Now, but I don't want to like undersell this either. Right? So this is just an amazing demo because in, you know, 30 seconds we built a whole app. Yeah. But in reality, this is just kind of that first app that you build to, to start to wrap your head around the axle, right? Because one of the things that I really try to preach in my Power Platform classes is that there is no magic here. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to understand how does this field right here show 333, which happens to be a title of a person I haven't deleted from the last class, that like you can just see that that is this item dot title. And I can go up here and be like, all right, well, instead of this item dot title, what if I want to see their first names? This item dot first name. That fake user doesn't have one. And then what if I wanted to see um, their first name and last name, right? Which is more traditional. And just like that, We've customized this one line, and you can see down here, Steven, Sarah, Nicola, Ferguson, right? All the employees that don't have blank records, Blaboo, who doesn't like Blaboo? Um, they've all all been done, right? And that's a very Excel-like formula. You, can you build Excel, Jeff? Uh, yeah, yes. Right? I, I think I've seen you do some mean Excelling. If you can write Excel formulas, you can write Power, power Apps formulas and, and spit out you know apps that do all the things you want to do. 
Hey, a couple of quick things, Shane. So one person is saying they wish they watched from the beginning. I just want to let you know, you can go back and watch from the beginning. This will all be up on, on all the places, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, all that stuff. Um, but you've got a challenger in the, in the chat. Shane, Tomas okay. says there are simply too many hidden limitations and additional licensing costs that discourage customers from implementing uh, everything within the power platform. What is your comment to that? I don't agree. Um, but I mean, I think that's my first one. So Thomas, but I, so there's those two points. Right. One hidden licensing. Is there so, hidden licensing? So licensing, right? And so Thomas obviously knows quite a bit about the platform. Uh, you know, so there are challenges with it as you start to scale up. So imagine that we take this employees list and like, hey, that's great, Shane, for your 20 person company. But now we want to build this uh, for someone who's got 20,000 employees. Yeah, we can build it, no problem. But it starts to have challenges using SharePoint as a back end at scale. So then you say, okay, well, then what do we do at scale? Well, we need to switch to one of the premium data sources and it's either Dataverse or SQL at that point, most likely. And so when you switch to one of the premium data sources, the app does become premium, which means that every user of the app, so not the, just the app builder, but all the users of the app do need premium licensing. And okay. so, yeah, I right. Thomas is exactly right. That does get challenging for um, a lot of companies and, and it's, it, it, it's like one of those moments, like you've built all these really cool things on the free or included platform. And then all of a sudden, you know, now it's like, oh, wait, I got to buy yeah. to, to do bigger. And yeah, it, it, it's a reality, you know, and, and sometimes people, I think it's hard to get people to go from, it was free to I've got to pay for it. But if you, if they can step back and say, all right, what business value am I driving here? is this part of our bigger long-term solution? The license isn't bad. But if you say, hey, this employee management app now has all these thousands of dollars in costs. And yeah. Like, like, yeah, it's easy to like defeat it on the licensing costs there. But if you start thinking about let's invest in the licenses and build hundreds or thousands of apps, like so many companies have done at this point, then the licensing, this app, you know, is, is pennies in the grand scheme of things. And it makes a lot more sense. So, so really two messages there. One, go in eyes wide open on what you're using the platform for. And if you're going to use something that has a model that shifts to a pay, be aware of that and have a plan for it. Second, I think is goes back to how you, you opened your session today. And that was, it's a great place for departmental folks to build the things that can help major, make major differences in their smaller scale. But once you get to enterprise scale and enterprise grade, you want to treat it as an enterprise app. Right. Yeah. And that's where you start in introducing governance. You start introducing application lifecycle management, right? All of those capabilities are there, but that's that, to your point, right? That's not where you start. You start by saying, Hey, how do I solve this problem I have? Yeah. You know, and, and one of the things that I really, uh, really like dig about it as well is, you know, like I said, this is a very simple app because obviously we've only got a little bit of time. We don't want to like get into the super weeds, right. but the fact that it starts to let me work with, the, the hardware, right? So like putting it on a mobile phone and saying, hey, I want to use the barcode scanner, the NFC scanner, the location services. I want to run this app offline. I want to take pictures. I bet half the apps that we build for customers end up incorporating pictures because it was never an option before. But all of us walk around with these high definition cameras in our hands now. And so doing collections, inspections, tracking of inventory, all those things, incorporating pictures all of a sudden yeah. really is like, whoa. I can do things that I wouldn't even thought of before. Um, the other thing, back to my whole comment, you know, that sometimes my pro dev friends, um, you know, refer to this as a toy, right? You can just build toy apps. Right. You know, the, the biggest app that we've seen, it was about a million dollar project to build a power app or it was a group of power apps for a very, 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 very large company. Right. I mean, so one business solution, you know, and it was a million dollars on the power platform to build out what they wanted which was, I mean, it's the most extreme example I've heard, yeah. but it was, you know, a $10 million project if it was hundred percent pro pro code. So yes, they spent a lot, but they, you know, so you can build very complex, robust things as well. Yes. is the moral of the story. Well, and it also goes back, choose the right, go in out with eyes wide open, choose the right tool for the job. And uh, it, it, not just in how we, we handle it from a requirements point of view or a small scale point of view, but what you're trying to do in, in the large scale. And for those, you know, that million dollar project, they're probably all in, in the Microsoft suite. It just made sense to extend to this next piece, which, uh, which they already had in their arsenal. I, yeah, I agree. And you no, know, it's a, uh, 
And I think the other interesting facet is someone in the chat just kind of reminded me with their comment was, you know, another crazy thing about the power platform. And, and like a lot of the people I talked to about this, they're coming from a place of InfoPath and SharePoint designer, right? So SharePointy people were like, hey, what's next? Um, I talked to a group of access people last week um, <laughs> at like 1030 my time. I was very tired. Um, but anyway, so I often talk to people in those kind of spaces. Yeah. But one of the things to remember is that like all of those tools were always kind of trapped in a box, right? InfoPath, you built InfoPath forms in a box and you're, that little SharePoint site and you didn't go anywhere. Yeah. The Power Platform has roughly 700, it's like 690 something connectors available to it. So, you know, obviously it's got all the Microsoft connectors, but it's got all the Amazon connectors. It's got YouTube, the Salesforce, the Twitter, the um, Oracle, the MySQL. Like it can connect to 700 Anything. different things, right? And if you're like, Shane, I, my stuff is so custom. It's still not on that list. Like my my car, right? I have a Tesla. Yeah. My car does not have a built-in uh, connector, but my car has an API. Guess what you can do if you got some pro dev friends? You can and build that's a power app that yep. starts and drives my car with a power app, right? You bring in Power Automate and you talk to that API. Now, to Thomas's point earlier, it is uh, a premium license when you go to those custom APIs, but the value, if it's there, the business value is there, we shouldn't be upset that it's it, it's not free. Right. All right. So just to draw it back to what you've done here, because we are about out of the time for, for this part of the program is, um, you know, this out of the box, you can have something, especially in a tabular data source, you can have something up and running in literally seconds. You can customize it as easy as you could customize writing formulas inside of Excel. And you can uh, then, of course, as somebody mentioned over in the chat, combine this with flow as well and get some workflows uh, associated with these things as well and really have a lot of power out of the box, make a lot of people a lot more productive, even in small groups. I'm looking at you, producer Daniel, how are we going to automate some of the things we're doing and make it easier? Ooh, so like um, so a, a, a lot of power here. Cool. Um, All right. Yeah. I, so Shane, you know. if people have questions, they want to learn more about what you do, obviously powerapps911.com is probably a great place to start. I would say so. And if you go to training.powerapps911.com, there's a free class that teaches Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI, like totally free. Um, you know, no, no hidden licensing in, in my uh, my free training classes there. But yeah, it's uh, you know a great way to uh, engage and just go spend a few minutes watching. We go through how to build this app in much detail. We start to customize it. We build a flow. We build your first reports and try to get you understanding, you know, because like I said, all of you've got off this with Office 365. So why aren't you digging deeper? That's right. And you know who's taking your free classes? My son, Stephen. That's right. He's going to be the next greatest, next greatest and latest chain at some point. Yeah, you know, it'd be a great Netflix reality show. I watch all these baking shows. Why can't we have a Netflix power app show, you know? Ooh. All right. Guys, comment. You want to see Shane do a, a, a reality show? Shane and I will do it. We'll do something every week. It'll be crazy. All right, Shane, thank you so much for taking. I know you're crazy busy, but you gave us some time here this morning. We really do appreciate that. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you for having me. And thank you everyone for joining. I've seen lots of very nice comments over in the uh, the pair there. I, we've gotten so many, we can't even respond to all of them. No. So, but yeah, I definitely, uh, yeah, appreciate you having me and appreciate everyone joining us this morning. Yeah. And thanks for sharing your channel. I, I took over the, the Shane Young channel for just a, just a few short minutes here this morning. We do have a few other things I want to cover. And so Shane, I'm going to let you sneak off off screen and we will get into some of these things. Cool. All right. Oh, we love you, Shane. All right, everyone. Uh, Shane, thanks so much for that. Uh, Power ups, guys. Uh, check it out. Uh, if you are new to us here, and a lot of you are because you're watching over on Shane's channel, then uh, go check out the podcast that all of this is about. It is uh, uh, Cloud Talk. You can find that wherever you find your podcast and see it all listed on the screen down below. Also, uh, all of the things that we do on the thought leadership side here at Rackspace can be found at rackspace.com slash solve. And what you won't find there, there is one thing you will not find there, and that is a salesperson. Guys, there's no pop-up. There's no, how can we help you today? It's just all free. All of our research, all of our articles, all of the everything. Go there. If you're looking to learn more about uh, the cloudy world, IT in general, go check that stuff out. I'd love for you to, to, to do that. Let me know what you think. So that's our cloud discussion. Let's see what's going on in the world of uh, of cloud, and that's news and how it is important to you. And it starts with an article out of the Financial Times, and it says, cloud computing, 
uh, powers the world's financial exchanges. Guys, financial world was one of those holdouts. Shane and I were fighting this years ago. Uh, and, and how do you get folks in the financial world to think more cloudy, even to get out of their data centers? And they were the holdouts. Well, that's changed. And this article from Financial Times calls this out. And uh, the fact that you look at... Um, uh, 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 all these, um, almost every institution right now is, uh, uh, is utilizing the cloud in one way or another and, uh, whether and making some significant commitments to clouds, whether it is Google cloud, like over at CME group, or even, uh, what's happening at, um, oh, where, where did it go? Uh, uh, over at uh, NASDAQ is a huge, uh, commitment with, um, with AWS and you find this over and over. So, Watch the financial institutions. They are using more and more clouds, even specialty clouds like out of Azure, what's happening there. Also in the news, Google Cloud wants to make it a lot easier to run massive machine learning workloads in their cloud. Now they announced uh, the general availability of its TPU virtual machines. Now TPU of course stands for ten uh, tensor processing units. Now before you weren't able to do some of the things, especially on the testing side that you could uh, in your own local environments. Well, Google has fixed that. So go check out what Google is doing to make your machine uh, ooh, that's wrong. Uh, you sh your uh, machine learning models run better in Google Cloud. All right. With that, folks, it's over to what's going on in cloud releases. And for us, that starts on AWS. Uh, Amazon EKS console now supports all standard, all standard Kubernetes resource types, simplifying cluster management. You in containers yet? If you're not, you should be. Uh, it's a great stepping stone into more cloud native for your workloads, getting out of VMs, getting into more cloud native. Now, if you're in the Amazon uh, ecosystem and containerized, well, you know, full uh, uh, EKS uh, standard endpoints available to you there in their management console. Now, from Azure, here's the news from Oops, uh, news from Azure. Their event grid in public preview, uh, they now have the ability uh, for users to grant. Uh, um, uh, give partners uh, the ability to create topics inside of Event Grid. Now, this is pretty cool. So Event Grid, if you don't know, it's a way to take a trigger from something happening inside of Azure and then make a thing happen. Well, now uh, partners can have access to that. Take a look at Event Grid for me real second, for just a second. So Event Grid allows you to use any of these uh, event resources triggering something in the event grid to an event handler. So that is a cause and an effect. And what's important here uh, and why this is news is the fact that now partners can be a part of that process. Now, up until July, uh, there has to be an explicit uh, permissions uh, given by the owner of that, of that account. So um, pretty cool stuff. Now over in Google, oh, looks like I didn't get the copy and paste, but they have a brand new region uh, over in Europe, Southwest One. So Europe hyphen Southwest One, Google, uh, Google has now expanded their regions even farther in the European space. Pretty cool stuff. All right, uh, folks, this is, uh, can you believe this is episode 119? If you're new to the program and, uh, uh, and you want to uh, go back on some of the old ones. There are a ton of episodes. You can find the audio from a lot of them over in uh, in that Cloud Talk podcast stream. You can also find them in uh, in Rackspace's history. Just do a search for um, hashtag Cloud Talk, and you can find all sorts of stuff. Uh, as always, we don't sell anything here at Rackspace other than I'd love for you to come and work with us. So the job of the day for us at Rackspace is a lead architect, well, in cloud native development. I teased you with saying that our, our regular developers all going away. Of course they're not, but we uh, one of the areas where there's still so much in demand, well, they're in demand so much everywhere, is in cloud native development. And we need a new one. Uh, we have tons of them, but we need a qualified lead software architect that has demonstrated the ability to think strategically about business uh, businesses and create technical definitions around customer objectives. Requirements, folks. How do we take their either established workloads and turn them into cloud native or write new stuff from scratch? If you're interested in learning more about that, go over to rackspace.com slash solve. You'll find all the information that you need. Uh, and if you're interested in checking out that job, well, just go over to rackspace.jobs and all that we have there are available. So check that out. Now, uh, again, one last pitch to go check out the podcast. The podcast has tons of great content there. We're at episode 119, I think, is all of these. And uh, there's an episode or two of Shane hidden back in there. You can go find those. I'd love for you to go check that out. Maybe even subscribe. Now, 
As we get to the end of this, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, bring up our good friends at App Dynamics. They are the leaders in software observability. So go check them out. If you are writing complex applications that require not just monitoring, but true observability from user all the way to the back end data sources and all points in between, App Dynamics is the place to check out. So go check those out over at appdynamics.com. Well, folks, this has been uh, really a, a super fun episode. Really thankful for Shane to be on the program today and for him to share his stream with us. And, uh, and I hope that you guys have an amazing day. We're back here on Thursday. And the topic is all things AI and ML. So today we were in the world of low-code, no-code. On Thursday at 8.30 Central Time, we will be in the world of of all things uh, AI, ML, not just what's happening today, but if we fast forward a little, what are some of the powerful things that you're going to be able to do with the, with the platform? All right. Thanks to everybody who helped make this happen. Daniel, Megan, Julia, all the people. And, uh, and Shane, of course, for being on the program. Everyone, I hope you have an amazing day. I am Jeff Diverter for Cloud Talk Live. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that have subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 911. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do. Then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.